we welcome you to our service today, uh, this 1030 service here in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas. And wherever you are around the world, I know that uh, you're in different time zones. We welcome you and thank you so much for participating in our services, even though sometimes it is very inconvenient for you. We want to welcome our brothers and sisters, of course, here in Corpus Christi proper, the Coastal Bend. Also, our brothers and sisters from around uh, Texas. But also, we want you to know, uh, those of you who are in Asia and Africa, uh, Europe, here in North America, Central America, South America, Australia, or the islands of the sea, we welcome you. And we consider you a part of us as we consider ourselves to be a part of you. Uh, today, we are celebrating 35 years of ministry. Amen. 35 years of ministry. And uh, I think that's quite a milestone to be in ministry for 35 years. And you know when you're in ministry that long, you've had some attacks against you. Oh, a plethora, a great number of attacks against you. But out of all of them, God has delivered us from every situation, every attempt of the enemy. Amen. And when that happens for us, you know it's happened, it will happen for you as well. And so today I want us to join together and we're going to uh, have praise and worship and then we're going to have a wonderful uh, program, as it were, today to show you uh, what God has done for us in the last 35 years. But Brother James Roots is back with us, our praise and worship leader, is back with us. As he's been around uh, several states in, here in the United States, he's been traveling a lot, but he's glad to be home. He, he traveled all around the, uh, the Southwest and uh, Central U.S. and then came back and got stuck in Houston, Texas. But he is back here. Brother James, we're so glad that you're back. We bless you. And uh, let us all stand together. If you feel like sitting down in a moment, you may do so. But let us join in praise and worship. God bless. Come on, everybody. Let's give God some praise for what he's done. Let's give him some praise for what he's doing. Let's give him some praise for what he's going to do. 35 years of faithfulness. 35 years of faithfulness. And we're praying for many, many more. In Jesus' name, are you ready? It's our testimony. Come on, put your hands together now. We declare you are our Jesus, Lord. Here we go. I saw Satan fall like lightning. And I saw darkness run full cover. But still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Everybody's singing, I believe in signs and wonders, I have resurrection power, still the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven, and my praise belongs to you forever. testimony. Come on now, come together. Here we go. Come together, sons and daughters. Fought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Come together now. Come together, sons and daughters. Fought with blood and in water, sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Our God will finish what He started. 
this morning because of Jesus? How many of y'all have a testimony because of what he's done in your life? How many of y'all are ready to celebrate the goodness of the Lord and his faithfulness? Come on, I need to see you go. We love you, Lord. Someone shout, I love you, Lord. Yeah. I'm alive in you, I'm alive. Go. I want you to give it everything you have. Come on now, come on. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, that's right. Come on, come on. For greater things, you sing it. Come on, when they hear you, come on. If I'm not dead. Come on, come on. That's right, yeah. Everybody lift your voice, say, if I'm not dead, you're not done. Bring the things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Bring the things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Testimony for grace rewrote my story. But Jesus Christ the righteous. Yeah, this is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony from death to life. But grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. But Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, somebody give him some praise. Oh, your faithfulness, God, 
longer great. The God of Abraham, the God of covenant, a faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Lift it up. Is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting? Same, I will praise your name. That's right, come on. Great is your faithfulness to me. Oh. Oh, 
Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are so faithful. You have been so faithful. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, all day, all night, you are faithful, Jesus. We are thankful for you. So thankful for all that you've done for us. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. From the very beginning, of our history in the Garden of Eden when we messed it up, you were faithful. You prepared your son in our place. And you, mir you mirrored it, you pictured it again with Abraham when he was to sacrifice his son. You had already prepared a ram in the bush. You have been faithful through the ages, as the song sings. You have been faithful from the very beginning of our onset, and you will be faithful to the very end. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. And so, Father, I pray for everybody that is in this house right now and those that are watching online, whether they're watching it live or they're watching the recording of it. Father, I just thank you for each and every single person. Lord, I ask that you would pour out on them your grace, your mercy, your love, your healing power as well, Father. Anyone that is suffering from any sickness or disease, Lord, I ask that you would pour out your healing power upon them. Lord, it has already been finished. It's already been completed by your stripes. You've taken on our sicknesses and our infirmities. Infirmaries. So, Father, I just ask that you would mend every broken bone, every torn soul, everything, Father, that you would bring it back into the way that you designed it, the way that you created them to be, Lord Jesus. Father, we lift up uh, those that are suffering from COVID here in the house. We lift up Kevin to you. We also lift up those around the world that are suffering from COVID. Father, I ask that you would just heal them in a miraculous way, that everyone would know that you have done it, that you have healed them, Lord Jesus. We also lift up Susan to you, Father, suffering from vertigo and shingles. Lord, I ask that you would heal her body in Jesus' name, that you would align everything inside her, that everything would be perfect and held upright, that she would not have any dizziness or any nausea or anything like that, and that you would also remove the shingles from her body. Lord, we thank you for Tanya. I ask you, Lord, that you give her strength in the death of her mom and all of those that have suffered loss recently, and there have been a lot. 
Lord, I ask that you would be their comfort, that you would be their peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, you know what it's like to lose a loved one. You watched your son die on a cross for everyone. You know the pain of losing the ones that you love. So, Father, I ask that you would minister to them, send people around them to give them strength, to be there for them, to support them in their time of pain. We also lift up Christy to you, that you would heal her completely, and also for Ken, that you would heal his skin condition, Lord God. We lift up Eloise, recovering from a stroke. We ask that you would strengthen Eloise and that you would make Eloise strong and whole. We also lift up Esther to you that has fluid and pain in her knees. Lord, we ask that you would correct her knee, that you would give her strength, that she'd be able to use her knee, that she'd be able to jump on her knee and worship and praise you, Father. We lift up the Lee family to you. They're asking for your grace, Jesus. I ask that you give them your grace more than they could ask, think, or imagine. And also Vina's brother-in-law that is having a procedure tomorrow for his stomach and legs. Lord, Lord, we pray for peace during this process. We pray for a good report. Lord, you've given us doctors. You've given us surgeons. You have put this knowledge here on this earth to make our lives better, to heal us. And we thank you for that. I thank you for the the doctors that are going to be in the room, for the attendees that are going to be in the room, everybody. Lord, I ask that you be in there as well, that you lead the hand of the surgeon and that that Vina's brother-in-law, Ed Roy, would come out better than when he went in. By your hand, Lord Jesus. Again, Father, I bless this house. I thank you for everyone that is here. I thank you for our our pastor and his wife. Thank you for Pastor Don and Sister Marva. Lord, I ask that you would just pour out on them and their family, on Marcus and Ginger and their families and their grandchildren and their grandchildren's children, Lord. We thank you for what you've done here in Corpus Christi. And I ask, Lord, that it continue. I, I, I know that you've said that it will, but I ask, Lord, that you would give us the strength to finish the race, that you would put our nose like a flint towards you and the things that you have of this world, Lord. As, as my brother James said, 35 more or even five more, whatever it is, in case you come in five years, Jesus, we want to be ready. We want to be dancing when the spotlight hits us, Lord Jesus. We want to do what you want here on this earth for as long as it takes. We're here, Lord. We're here for the long haul. We're not just sprinters. We're marathon runners. We love you, Father. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. And now we are going to continue our service with a reading from our sister, Jadita Ulig. The faithful God. Whether we know it or not, we are always looking for someone or something that is faithful. Someone or something on which we can depend. For the believer, we have found Jesus Christ, God's Son, to be that faithful someone who never wavers regardless of the situation or circumstance. His nature character and substance are faithfulness not only are these qualities not only are these qualities he possesses but they are the very fabric of his being in the book of revelation the apostle john records and to the angel of the church of the lydoseans write these things says the amen the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Inherent in these three appellations, names for the Lord, we see the surety of his character embedded therein, in the amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Each of these inspires confidence, dependability, reliance, trust, and faith. From childhood through my teenage years, the following refrain was heard in many, if not most, of the church services I attended. They said, every word of God is right, is true. Therefore, we are able to lean on and depend on Christ himself, who is the very word of God, meaning there is no failure. And as he himself has said, the scripture cannot be broken. 
Many say when God says something, it is as good as done. However, we should say when God says something, it is done. Since we know that his word is unchangeable, we do not wait in order to see, in order to believe. We believe, then see it. Otherwise, we could never embrace his promises afar off or find comfort in the scriptures. Christ gives us assurance saying, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Our entire life has been a history lesson of his faithfulness. And not only that, but we also are presently enjoying the fruit of the faith of those who preceded us. They believed God for themselves and us. And we are presently believing God for ourselves and others. We continue to believe and trust that the Lord Jesus is faithful. And as a result, we receive what he has promised. Our lives are like one taking a perilous journey. It's fraught with many dangers, toils, and snares, but he continues onward, judging him faithful. Paul, one of our predecessors in the faith, in the midst of a perilous voyage, while living in the will of God, had an angelic visitor who said to him, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Upon hearing from the Lord through the heavenly messenger, Paul said, therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. You also must believe it will be done for you just as it was told you, counting him faithful who called you, knowing that he, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God will speak to you in your peril and bring you safely to your destination. Trusting Jesus, Pastor Don. to us. God is faithful. He's never, ever let us down. And he never will. Oh God, we give you all praise, glory, and honor. Amen. Good morning, everyone. God bless you today. My name is Rose LaBelle. I'm the media director here, and I am so excited. And it's with great honor that I say happy anniversary. 35 years, Fellowship family. What an amazing testimony that we can all say that God has allowed us to see this day. That is momentous. Oh, my goodness, to mark this day of God's faithfulness throughout the years for the Fellowship family. Amen. And I tell you what, the Fellowship is a special place. God has done something truly amazing here. I don't know of any other place in the world like it. He has brought over 38 nations here together from around the world. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I'm telling you, it is. It is amazing. And he has allowed us to go into nations. I don't know what that count is, but we have taken the, the Christ-centered message all over the world, guys. Amazing, amazing. 
He has brought us a multi-ethnic body, multi-generational from our newest member resting in his mother's womb to our 102-year-old um, uh, uh, member, J.R. Fields. God has done a great work here. He surely has. And he has caused us to be one body, united in Christ, united in his love. Oh, my. Can we all just give God some great, exuberant praise for what he has done? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're so good. You're so wonderful. Oh, Father God, you redeemed us to yourself. Father God, you revealed yourself to us. Father God, you've given us wonderful pastors, Pastor Don and Sister Marva. Oh, Father God, where would we be without you? We praise your holy name. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness towards us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We could never give God enough praise. Keep your heart full of gratitude for what the Lord has done, what the Lord is doing. Because, you know, that's how we overcome being thankful to the Lord. Amen. Because he's going to perform it. He's going to do it. It's what we've been saying all morning long. He is faithful. He will never disappoint. Never, ever. God is so good. And you know, guys, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you who said yes to the call of the Lord, who brought you here from the ones who have, were there from the very beginning. Thank you. For the ones who have just joined us, thank you. You know, we're all a part of God's eternal work. Yes, we are. Thank you, Lord. Amen. There is room for everyone here at the fellowship, and everyone is welcome. And so with that, I want to just ask if there are anyone here for the very first time who has joined us. Would you let us know by raising your hands? We consider you our guests. Anyone here for the very first time, welcome. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Anyone else in the house? Thank you. Thank you so much. I call that section one. Thank you so very much. Thank you for coming. We are so very, very grateful. You have come on a very special day. And uh, ushers are giving you a card, and we just ask you to fill it out so that we can get in touch with you to let you know that we love you and we're here for you. And we are also giving you a gift just to say thank you. And we pray that you'll come back again and again and again. So at this time, would we all stand together? Let's greet each other with a holy wave, smile through those masks. It's so good to see you. Hello, fellowship family. Hello, fellowship family. We love you. God bless you. God is so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We also want to say hello to our, uh, our online family. Thank you so very much for each and every one of you who have joined us. And we want to say especially hello to Sister Roop from Pakistan. Good, hello, Sister Roop. We want to say hello to Pastor George from Ghana. We love you so much. We want to say hello to Pastor Shafkat Gill from Pakistan. We want to say hello to Pastor Renee Olivares from Mexico. Thank you, thank you. We love you. Hello, Apostle Medindi from Zimbabwe. Oh, my goodness. We love you. God bless you. And hello to Pastor Lito Subido from the Philippines. Hallelujah. I want you to know that all of them have sent their congratulations to us. It's just truly amazing. And I want you to know that over the next few weeks, because there's so many congratulations that they have sent to us, you will see them on all of our social media platforms. So please tune in and, and just see how we are connected around the world. Pray for our international uh, brothers and sisters. They belong to us. They are part of us, and we love you. We're invested in you. We pray for you. And God bless you. Thank you so very much. Amen. So at this time, um, I would like for us to continue with our worship, with our uh, giving of our tithes and offering. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
God has so generously poured out on us. This is what we're celebrating today. And so let us return a small portion of what he's so generously given us. Here at the fellowship, there are three ways to give. You can give by check, cash. And if it is a cash, raise your hands, and the ushers will give you a offering envelope. Just raise your hands and keep it up until you're served. You can also give online at cccfellowship.com forward slash give. And you can also text your tithes and your offering. You can text it to number 361-386-2565. Also text the word keywords and you will be given a, uh, a list of giving options if you would like to designate your offering, okay? Amen. Has everyone been served? Raise your hands if you have not. All right, let's pray together. Father God, we so love you. We are so grateful to belong to you. Thank you for your great faithfulness to us. Thank you, Father God, for loving us so much. Thank you, Father God, for pouring into our hearts and giving generously unto us. Father God, with great joy, we return to you a small portion of what you have so generously given us. We say thank you, Father God. We ask that you bless every single giver, bless the gift that they have given. May it go to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ushers, please receive the offering. Amen. Sister Amy, God bless you. Thank you so very, very much. At this time, I would like to present to you a video that has been prepared for this occasion. It will show us a, a glimpse of the 35 years of God's faithfulness to this house, Corpus Christi Christian Fellowship. By no means is it exhaustive, but I pray in every clip and picture you will see God's faithfulness to us. Amen? Amen. I want to thank, though, however, those of you who um, heard and responded with your pictures by sending them in. Thank you so very much. And I want to thank all of our photographers, but especially James Walker. He's on the job today serving. God bless you. Brother Aaron Gracia, who's serving in our control room. Thank you, brother, so very, very much. I also want to thank every single 
team member through the years of the video television ministry who have recorded and documented our history. Your labor of love will never be forgotten. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so faithful, so very faithful. And I want to thank Gloria Strait, the fellowship's video editor, who put this project together for us. She is amazing. She is so gifted and such a blessing. Make sure you tell Gloria that whenever you see her again. And we just want to thank God for Pastor Don and Sister Marva. This fellowship would not be what it is without Pastor Don and Sister Marva. Thank you. Thank you for raising us up. Thank you for te teaching us the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And I even want to thank Ginger and her family and Marcus and his family for sharing them with us. They have thousands of spiritual brothers and sisters, and they've been gracious to share with their parents with us. Thank you guys so very, very much. And above all, we want to thank Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Without him, we can do nothing. We love you, Lord. We love you. So I pray that you will enjoy this. I give to you 35 years of God's faithfulness. God bless you. We're going to dim the lights. Amen. Lord bless you. The vision of the Corpus Christi Christian Fellowship. We are called to train and equip the army of the Lord to perfect, bring to maturity, that is, the people of God, to reach every person in our city with the word of God, to be a light to this city, to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, to be a safe place for the hurting and the lost, to be an example of unity and to promote that unity in the body of Christ. The results are Corpus Christi will live up to the meaning of its name. A thunderous roar will erupt from Corpus Christi, which will be God's people praising him. People will come from all over the world to see what God is doing here in our city of Corpus Christi. And the Lord will have a people in whom he can be himself. generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and the thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and the thousand generations
the gospel is about you, it's not the gospel. If the gospel is about materialism, it is not the gospel. If the gospel is about politics, it's not the gospel. If the gospel is about social, social issues, it's not the gospel. I'm saying to you that the gospel is Jesus Christ preached to a people so that they might have an understanding of God, the light of God, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, so that you might live eternally. That's the gospel. My focus is Christ and his gospel because the gospel will change men. It changed me. The migration is upon you. Diversification. Many nations, they're coming. Because I see a new mantle coming upon you. There's a brand new mantle coming upon you. That's a, that's a mantle to father. To father many, not only in this city, but abroad. Uh, to father in Africa, to, to father even in uh, down south, in central South America. I see you fathering. I see, uh, I see uh, tents, tents. So that would mean men. I see tents being built into houses. As far, God called you a pioneer. God called you to pioneer works. And, and these works is where you'll place your spiritual sons as you raise them up. Don't be afraid. See, you're not afraid to lose something that God has given you because you know that if God has given it to you, man can't take it away. So brace yourself because the Lord says this is the time to expand your tent pegs. Loosen your tent pegs. Loosen them now because I'm bringing sons from the north. I'm bringing sons from the south. I'm bringing sons from the east. And I'm bringing sons from the west. And I'm raising you up as an apostle in the house of the living God. Hallelujah! A father in the house. Thank you. A father in the house. You may ask, why are you always preaching about Jesus? Well, he is the only subject worth talking about. I'm a fan of Christ. I, I'm a worshiper of Christ. I'm a lover of Christ. Uh, and I cannot get over that. I, I, I am hopelessly in love with him. Preaching is not my passion. Some of you may think preaching is my passion. It's not my passion at all. I promise you it is not. I do this. I do this because I am passionately in love with Christ Jesus. So Jesus is my passion, not preaching. He says, he will glorify me. So what does that mean? He will shine brightly upon me so that everything that happens in the church will be Jesus-centered. I am a Jesus person. If you want to call me a Jesus freak, I'm that and more. I'm a fan of the Lord and I want to see the knowledge of his glory. We all have a calling. If God has saved you, it's because you have a calling. Another word for calling is purpose. Oh, and, and everybody's got this purpose. Not just the preacher. Everybody's got this purpose. And it is to show forth the glory of God.
Fellowship Church, it's your brothers the Katinas. It's our honor to join with you in celebrating 35 years wow. of ministry. Thank you for your impact. Thank you for giving to Jesus and giving to the community of Corpus Christi and all over the world. Pastor Lavelle and our dear friend, uh, First Lady Marva, we love you all and hope that you enjoy this 35th celebration. Like, oh. 
Did you know that in May of 1996, the fellowship was active in the initiation of the monthly day of fasting and prayer at the Corpus Christi Police Department? For the past 25 years, we have seen a continual decline in crime, violence, lawlessness, and that God has protected our city from the direct hit of a hurricane. We thank God for his goodness. Did you know that since 2016, the fellowship through the care portal has helped prevent over 300 children from entering into the foster care system, which has resulted in these children remaining with family. Through the fellowship support and financial assistance, many children have been reunited with their biological families with an economic impact in the state of Texas of over $50,000. Do you know, since the fellowship's conception and through the generous hearts of the fellowship family, we have been blessed and able to serve those in need in our local community through our food pantry. Since the COVID pandemic, we have served more than 500 families. The Fellowship's Food Pantry provides families with over 60 pounds of food. We provide the basic basket, including fresh meat and produce. With great love and joy, we also tend to the spiritual needs by praying for all those who come to receive. Many have received salvation, and we have received numerous praise reports of answered prayers. Did you know that in 2002, the fellowship began the Northside Ministry that met the spiritual and basic life needs of food, clothing, shelter, electric, and utilities for the families of the Northside Manor apartment complex. For 12 years, we assisted with the educational needs of their children and supported sending their boys to summer camp every year for 12 years. We thank God for his goodness. Did you know that the Fellowship family filled and decorated over 3,000 Christmas shoe boxes for children around the world? Children in the Philippines, Ecuador, Benin, Togo, and right here in the coastal bend were blessed because of Christ's love expressed through you. The Christmas shoe boxes arrived in Togo and Benin before TFI was launched there, serving as an introduction to the work that God would establish through the Fellowship International. God is truly intentional and purposeful in all he does. Did you know God has used the Fellowship to minister to families during some of their darkest moments? The Fellowship family has provided financial relief to those affected by natural disasters through the years. In 2005, we met the buses as they arrived in our city with families displaced in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Being led by the Holy Spirit, we provided much assistance and accommodations such as food, beds, apartments, cars, and the like. We also provided spiritual counseling to all those who desired it. Did you know, in 2010, the Lord used the fellowship to minister to the people of the nation of Haiti after a devastating earthquake that destroyed much of their cities. In 2011, we impacted the people of Japan after Typhoon Talus and Roki by providing much needed assistance. In 2013, the fellowship ministered to the needs of the Filipino people after Typhoon Yolanda. In 2017, we helped the people of Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria left the nation destroyed and without power for over a year. None of this would have been possible without the enablement of the Lord Jesus Christ and your generosity and desire to do God's will. Did you know that on September 20th, 2017, the island of St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands was devastated by Hurricane Maria, a Category 5 hurricane? Many people were left without shelter, food, clothing, and other basic necessities. The fellowship aided in getting a 40-foot container to the island with clothing, hurricane survival essentials such as batteries, tarps, lanterns, personal care items, medical supplies, and thousands of pounds of food. Did you know? elder brother who is the, the the son of God 
He is my elder brother. Let me tell you a little bit about my elder brother. My elder brother defeated all the host of hell, a myriad of fallen angels by himself. My elder brother, he tread the wine press by himself. He didn't have angelic help. That's my older brother. I want to tell you a little bit about him because I absolutely love my older brother. He loved me more than he loved himself. He took my sin upon him. He took my punishment upon him. He took the wrath of God upon him. It wasn't his. It was mine, and he took it. That's my elder brother. He bore the wrath of God. I love my older brother. My older brother. My elder brother always pleased God the Father. Always, every day, every moment, in thought, in word, and in deed, he always pleased. I just want to be like my older brother. I want to be like my elder brother. He's a life giver. My elder brother wanted me to have life and have it so abundantly that he died to give me his own life. That's my elder brother. And you and I are going to need our elder brother more and more. Church, being here is not about going through some ritualistic exercise. It's about a relationship. We have the life giver, and he's not exterior to us. He is now living inside us. He lives in our heart. He lives in our heart. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ, first of all, your son, your amazing and darling son, your precious and wonderful son, who lives in each of us by his spirit, who is in charge of our lives, who will never leave us nor forsake us. And when we are our weakest, we will represent, represent, we will show forth him even the more and even the mightier. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his hand over us and above us. Thank you for his involvement in every act that we perform, that we do. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that this church will be the church that he died for. And I pray that he will be at home in each one of us. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father, and we give you our lives. All of our hope is in you. Thank you so much for bringing us together from every nation, it seems, from across this globe. I pray, God, that you would be glorified. Our past has been an amazing past. It has been a glorious past. Our future is so wonderful. Our present shall be even more powerful and more glorious because of you, Jesus. We thank you. I 
Thank you, Brother Rennie. Wow. Hasn't God been amazing? Wow. It's amazing. And there's a lot more that he plans to do. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sister Rose, for this compilation and, and wonderful presentation. We appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And uh, for all of us here today, just thank you for your presence here. It has just been a great journey. And um, you're a part of that. Uh, you're a part of that great journey. And that's why it's so exciting to me, how God does such ma miraculous things. Um, I, I do want to say, Jalen, hey, uh, before you leave, can we want to pray for you? Why don't we do it right now? You right? You okay? Okay. I can lay my hands on you. I can throw it at you. Come on. Uh, Jalen's being deployed, so we're going to come on up, Jalen. We're going to bless him, bless him here. We're going to. We're going to do all of the above. This is that full service church. I told Jalen, I said, you're the kind of guy in the army, those, those tough guys you don't mess with. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the side. They were always number one in everything, except when I got there. <laughs> Father, in the name of the Lord, we bless, we bless our brother, Jalen. We lay our hands upon him and bless him in Jesus' name, asking you to shield him, protect him, from all dangers, those that are seen, those that are unseen, uh, those that are close, those that are far. We pray that you would shield him and protect him, just as you did for your soldiers in ancient Israel. When they would go into war, it was a shock and a surprise when anyone was hurt or damaged because they always won. Lord God, you've made him a winner, and I thank you. He is a winner through Christ. He is protected through Christ. He will stand through Christ. And I say, though a thousand shall fall at his side and ten thousand at his right hand, it will not come near him. Uh, it will not come near him. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless him. We bless his parents. We bless his family, his brother. We bless all of his loved ones that they will not be concerned, overly concerned about him because they will, they will have entrusted Jalen into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. We bless you, Jalen. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you, Jalen. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, just, we've watched him grow up. It's been amazing here. Well, anyway, we're going to just say a few words. And I wanted to, uh, to um, have my wife to, to say something to you 
uh, about this amazing 35-year journey. It's been an amazing 35-year journey. And uh, when I was a young boy, I thought that was old and things like that need to be done away with. It was old. Come, would you say something? Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you all here today. And uh, mainly, I just want to say thank you to you all. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to serve with you. Some of you have been here uh, kind of like from the beginning. Oh, yeah. And some of you here, you know, different periods of time. But Last just week even. Last week even, yeah, even you. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. And uh, looking at this video, just know that everything that you saw there began with a word from the Lord. Hearing him and then just endeavoring to do everything that he said. And as a result, this is what you see. And uh, just know that it, it was all the Lord's doing. When, uh, amen, it was all the Lord's doing. And when the pastor was, and when the pastor was called off of his job to come and do this, I shared this with the early service. He didn't know anything about how to start a church or pastor a church or bring people from all over the world. No, it was hearing God and doing what he said. And also, uh, I was thinking about the, the, in the chapter of Hebrews where they have the heroes of faith, that hall of fame, people that are just heroes that did all these awesome things. Well, they were people like you and I, ordinary people dealing with life's issues just like we still have to deal with them. But even in the midst of that, they heard God and did what God told them to do. They were not perfect. They had their mess ups, their mix ups, and that's what I like about the Bible. The whole thing is up in there. Their mess ups, their mix ups, their tragedies, their, their victories, it's all there. And that is the way life is. No trial or temptation has overtaken any of us except that it's common to man. So you may think that what you're going through is, is an uncommon thing, but uh, that's not what the word says, that what we're going through is common to man. So even in the midst of all of that, we have a present help, and his name is Jesus. He's still very much available. He has said, if you call me, I will come, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and awesome things. And we would sing a song in the old days, I'm going to watch, fight, and pray. The fight was the fight of faith. Amen. Amen. And pray was calling on the Lord. And that watching Paul was like, sit back, look, and watch him go to work. Amen. Amen. Watch and pray. Watch him go to work. So I just want to encourage you just to do what he says. You want to see him? Just do what he says. You want to see him? Just do what he says, and you will see him move and act in your life. Now, the pastor asked me to be positive this, 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 this service. I said, you mean I wasn't positive, honey? He said, well, not all together. He said, not all together. Not all together. Because I went on to talk about you know, some people get mad and leave the church. Some because of him, some because of me, and some because of some of y'all. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all. We are in this together. This is a family church. Serve the Lord with gladness. Not madness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. I just want to encourage you. There. I'll, I'll just stop right there. I want to obey you. <laughs> Amen. God is good, isn't he, y'all? And know this. Know this. Just like the fellowship has its story, each one of you have your story of how you found the Lord, how the Lord's been faithful to you. 
And if you would just stop and think where you came from and where you've come to and how you've never lacked any good thing you've had, always had everything you've ever needed. You know what I'm saying? We all have our stories. And just know that it's all for his glory. Amen? Bless you. Amen. Man, thank you, Sister Marva. Amen. <laughs> um, before we go further, I understand that uh, our brother Eric and, and his wife Crystal are here with Azariah. Where are you? Oh, wow. Azariah just came to church today. Wow. Hey, Azar Azariah. Wow. Bless you. Man, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I want, to, I want you to know that, that um, some, yes, I see our brother. Listen, in this church, I am not bothered about a baby crying. And really, it shows life. I remember Sister Darkness Rose said to me years ago, she said, you know, the ark was a smelly place, but there was life there. And so, you know, it's a... It's okay. You know, if a baby gets too fussy, we can take them out, but you don't have to do it in the first class. You just don't. Or the second, or the third, or the fourth. You don't have to do that. Amen. 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 It's life there. If we appreciate your kindness, but there's life there. Always life there. I don't like to do too much uh, when it comes to those kinds of things. It's life there. And this is what the church has been about for these years. I want to just share a few th thoughts with you. Um, um, we, we don't. Uh, let me just not say that. Uh, just a few thoughts with you. <laughs> you know what I was going to say, <laughs> but I'm not going to say that. The scripture says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain to build it. And so it's so important. You'll see your life parallels the life of this fellowship. Um, uh, my wife was talking about uh, having a word from God and then just believing what God says. And this is what we all endeavor to do. Uh, uh, my wife and I, the, the eldership here, wh whoever the leaders are here, we desire to hear God and do whatever he says. And you can be assured of that. If we ever miss, it's not because we weren't trying. We are always trying to only do what God wants. I used to say to, to uh, believers, I don't have an agenda. And the Holy Spirit one day corrected me and said, you do have an agenda. It's just not a personal one. And so it's not a personal agenda, but it's what does God want? And that's how this fellowship started, uh, trying to de determine what God wanted. See, everyone who is called of God is called to a journey of faith. Every one of us. It's not like, okay, oh, that's a person of faith. No, we are all people of faith. We are called to a faith journey. Sometimes we feel like our life or our journey is very insignificant. It's of little to no value. That is absolutely a lie from, from Satan himself. Your life matters. And this is how that works. God calls you to believe him. So whenever something negative from our human perspective happens, whenever something negative happens, doesn't mean that God's not with you. Doesn't mean that God is not for you. God is about to show you something. Yeah, he's about to show you something. Almost, the, if, if not the first thing, almost the first thing we say when things happen wrong, well, what did I do wrong? What do you mean, what did you do wrong? What did you do right? What did you do right? And so the enemy is always attacking, but God is always showing us that he, God, in you, is more formidable than the enemy outside you. It's always showing you that. Yeah. We started a number of years ago. Actually, before 35 years ago, the Lord had placed this fellowship in our hearts. I remember being in my mid-20s, um, about 25 or 6 or so, hearing the voice of God saying, um, I'd like a place for all of my children to worship me together. I'd like a place where they could all worship me together. And as a young man, I said, I would do it, Lord, but I don't know how. 
See, we, are, we should always endeavor to do whatever God says. You don't try to figure everything out. Do whatever. And he said, love everyone who comes through your door. Because God wanted all. When you look around, it's such a beautiful uh, work of God to see people from various nations. 38 nations was our last count. People who were born in 38 different nations found this their home. A place that you have to go to, not through. That's big. And that shows you how faithful God is. This is a faith journey. Your journey is a faith journey. Uh, we were... Uh, there a, a number of years ago, of course, uh, we, we, we talked about it. You've heard much of the story. I won't reiterate it at this particular juncture. But it began just with conversation, with a word from God. Not knowing. My wife, I thought she put a little bit too, more, too much emphasis on he didn't know what he was doing. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's actually was enjoying that. But, <laughs> but it, it is true. It is true. I said, Lord, I, I remember a number of years ago when somebody said, we need to get out of here. This man has, doesn't have any experience. And, you know, being the boohoo I am, I just boohooed a little bit privately and uh, said, they're right, they're right. He said, you don't need any. Follow me. And so that's, that's how our journey is. That's how our life is. God doesn't call anybody to failure. He doesn't, didn't call you to, call, to allow you or cause you to fail. So our, our failure always comes when we d do it our own way. I can't stand that f song that Frank Sinatra used to sing, I did it my way. I go, really? Do you know where people spend eternity who do, who do things their way? Yeah, so, so we never wanted to do things our way. And it might, may seem like that to somebody, but we always want to do those things God's way. He said, you don't need any experience. Follow me. And I once I said, asked the Lord, I said, well, Lord, how will I know if I don't see you? What should I do? These were my conversations with him. He said, just stop, stop. Do what I, the last thing I told you. Don't go beyond that. He said, because I will always cause you to see me. I will always cause you to see me. And so that's been our journey. That's not only the journey of this fellowship. It's the, your personal journey. And you can learn much by observing others. I used to say to my, our two, two children who were here, you don't have to experience everything. You don't have to experience everything. You can learn so much from watching others. And you can learn how to be faithful, of course, firstly, by reading the Word of God and not reading into the Word of God. But read out of it. Find, because sometimes when you're studying the Word of God, and this has been our, our journey, you're studying the Word of God, sometimes God requires something that you don't want to give. Is there anybody here who says, no, no, I've always wanted to give him every single thing, every time. You stand up. Come take the podium. <laughs> because I, I have not found that to be the case. Sometimes I, I used to read the Bible, and if you had me on a tape recorder, you'd say, no, Lord, mm -mm. That can't be. No. No. What? Really? Wow, Jesus. Okay. You know, you would hear conversations like that because I thought, no. I used to get upset with the Lord for the way he treated those Old Testament folks. I can't believe you would do such a thing until I realized how given over to wickedness they were. So you will learn so much by reading the Word of God, by by, by allowing the Holy Spirit to direct your thinking and to direct your walk with God. Learn so much. I, I've learned how to be kind to people by, uh, by observing how kind God is to me and how, by watching others. Yeah. I, my attitude is I'm not going to let them uh, love the Lord more than me. Can I tell you a quick story? I was in a church service. I'd been invited to, to speak at this conference. And uh, I, I was pre well prepared and uh, was ready to, uh, ready to do whatever, give whatever God had given to me. And uh, the host uh, of the conference was a, a wonderful lady. She and her husband were pastoring a church, a local church, a very, very small uh, church. And uh, she would begin to express her love for Jesus. And she would weep and she would make these noises. You know how sometimes when you're 
uh, really crying? You all don't know? Oh, I'm not going to make them for you, but... <laughs> I'm going to tell this story without the sound effects. And so, but she started to moan and cry and talk, say, start saying, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And man, I, I got one of those ugly cries because I thought, it's like she loves you more than me. Now, now listen, I, I, I want you to, don't misunderstand. I am not trying to be competitive. I'm just saying this is our journey. I don't want anybody to love Jesus more than me. And you should not either. When you see the faithfulness of God, you'll say, no, I want the same. The Hebrews tells us, uh, the, the writer of Hebrews tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Now, so that means that everyone, God, when we start our journey, God has dealt to each of us, has given each of us a measure of faith, a measure of faith. So you are not without faith if you are a believer. You have to use the faith that you have. You, you know, if whatever, Jesus has already to, showed, uh, shown us um, the, the formi the, uh, how formidable faith is, how powerful faith is. This is what he said. He says, if you possess faith the size of a, a little grain of mustard seed, mustard seed, you can say this huge mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. Do not doubt in your heart. But believe that what you say will come to pass is that you will have what you say. It doesn't mean you go, you go to the Mercedes dealership. Mercedes, you know. That's not what he's talking about. I think, we, I mean, I think we've used, we use faith wrongly. Then we come out and we say it didn't work. Your faith will work when you go to work for that Mercedes. <laughs> but but, but uh, verse 6 of Hebrews 11 uh, followed verse 5 when the writer tells us that, that Enoch was this man who walked with God. And then one day he was gone because God had taken him. He says, but before God took him, this is, was his testimony. What? That he pleased God. So if you want to be a God pleaser, I want to be a God pleaser. It requires faith. Faith pleases God. And so he says he was not found because God had taken him because before he was taken, he had the testimony. He pleased God. And now the writer says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I, I, I would like, just in a, in a brief summation, just say to us, let us be God pleasers. Let, let us follow the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead you in what we would call an antithetical direction to the world. That means that if the world is going on th here in this direction, the Holy Spirit will always lead you in the polar opposite. He leads you in the polar opposite. And what we want to do as we walk out our salvation, we want to be faithful to God as he has been faithful to us. My faith comes from his faithfulness. Your faith comes, is born out of God's faithfulness. So God, what God does when we come to him, he, he does, to use my, one of my favorite words, he inculcates his faith into you. And so every difficulty you have is not from the devil as it were. The devil, oh yeah, he's trying to, to kill you. He's trying to steal from you. He's trying to destroy you. But that's not why God allowed it to come. God is saying, I'm going to show you that, that, that he is a defeated foe. I'm going to show you that no weapon formed against you can prosper. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. I'm going to prove to you that when you go t through waters that are over your head, that you won't drown. You can't drown. When you go through fiery, fiery uh, uh, trials, difficult like the 
the three Hebrew boys went through. He said, when you go through them, this is what I'm going to show you. Don't fight and say, what's wrong? Have I sinned? Uh, uh, uh. Don't do that. He said, don't do that. He said, when you go through the fire, I'm not going to allow it to burn you. I'm not going to allow your hair to be singed. I'm not going to even allow you to smell like you've been in the smoke pit. That's what God is saying. So, so he builds our faith. The things that used to cause me some, some consternation, you know, when you're young in the Lord. and some, I'm looking at young people in the Lord, and some of us are old in the Lord, and you, you see these trials, you, you know, oh, Jesus, oh, a trial, you know. Oh, God, please. I used to, I've done that. Anybody else like me here, you've done that? No? Y'all haven't. Wow. So you're going into some of that. I've done that. Oh, Lord, please, not this trial. Oh, Lord, God, not that trial. And, the Lord, and I've come through them. Bruised sometimes, scraped sometimes. But when I came out, I go, I thought I was, I was scraped there. I don't see that. I, I don't smell the smoke. I don't look like I've been washed up on a seashore, been f four days dead in the ocean and washed up. And not, neither do you. And so this is what God is saying. Your journey is a faith journey. He's going to bring you through. As our sister Jadira read today, he's going to bring you to your destination intact. Amen. Amen. I'll be back in a minute. Just be Thank you. 
of the goodness of God. Oh, yes, I will. I will sing of your love. Wow. Yes, go ahead. All right. They're going to they're gonna finish singing that. That, that. I feel like that is the theme song of my life. <laughs> but, yes, what about you? Yeah. When you recognize how good God has been to you, it will change your life completely. You'll be better toward other people. You'll be even better toward yourself. You'll walk the Christian life because your journey has been aided by the goodness of God. Have you ever uh, unknowingly just tried to mess up everything in your life? <laughs> uh, you know what? I, mean, I don't know. I think we got people here who say, I'm not admitting to anything in this church. <laughs> you know? I mean, just, try, just, just like messing up everything. And God wouldn't let you. Well, you know what I'm saying? Can y'all send one more, one more real good story? I've never, I don't think I've ever told you this one. If I've told you this one, say, you've told me, and I'll stop in the middle of my story. I, I, you know, I grew up, I told you, I grew up in this Pentecostal church. Y'all know what that means? You know, and, uh, and so uh, one of my cousins who was re just resisting the Lord, resisting the Lord, uh, she wanted to live, uh, she was one of these brainy people, right? And she wanted to just live on her own terms and all that. And so one night, uh, uh, the preacher's boy, they, they preach. I mean, it's like if, if you weren't under conviction, they, they were going to preach that you got some conviction. And so, so they, they were, it was preaching, man, and it was, it was just making you kind of nervous, almost like shaking. And this cousin of mine started to kind of, she was resisting God, and she kept, so she, would, she got up to run out of the church so she could get away with resisting God, I guess. I guess she thought God wouldn't be out there. So, so she was running out, and one of the ushers, you got to watch them, as they said, he said, you got to watch them ushers. So this usher got in front of her, of her. And so she tried to go around the usher. And the usher wouldn't let her get out. It, and she just broke down, cried, repented, asked God to forgive her. She's still walking with Jesus. <laughs> and, and, you know, the amazing thing is, but that, I thought it was funny. I've laughed about it through the years. But, you know, that's the way God did me. That's the way pro God probably did many, many of us. You were trying to get around God, and the Holy Spirit was that usher. Yeah, that's how that stuff works. Thank you, Jesus. That's how good God has been to all of us. You're here, God's been good to you. You're here, maybe you came because one of your loved ones asked you to come and you're not saved. Would you like to be saved today? Would you like to go home a different person? If you do, just raise your hand and say, Pastor, I want, to, I want to give my heart to Jesus today. Is there anybody here? Anybody? Anybody? What about online there? We have a moderator, our sister Virginia Eisenhower. We thank you. Uh, uh, Christiana, Christiana Ortegon is our moderator today. So you just write our sister Christiana and ask her, say, uh, uh, say, how do I, how am I saved? How should I, how do I become saved? Confess your sins. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe the, that, God, that Jesus is God's son. Believe that God raised him from the dead. And Christiana will lead you into the sinner's prayer. So you can do that, all right? Are we good? Oh, wow. Bless the Lord. Wow, this has been a marvelous day. Again, thank you, Sister Rose. Thank you, the team that helped you, all the people you named. Brother James, good to see you back. And thank you for all of the wonderful praise and worship, all this wonderful good praise and worship singing and playing these guitars. And when you were, what was that first song, the title of it again that you did? My testimony. You know, when I thought, okay, this is what I'm going to challenge you. 
Uh, the next one, maybe not the immediate next time, but soon I want you to give about four guitars and, and, and we're going to play my testimony about four guitars. Is that all right? It just came to me. All right. Now listen, uh, let, let's bless each other. I, isn't it a, an amazing prerogative uh, to be able to bless each other, right? It's, a, it's, it's a, an amazing privilege. But before I do so, I thank the Sister Rose, I thank the praise team, I thank the ushers, and I am thanking the ushers and the greeters for your part, the camera people, and all of that. And, and I want to thank, I can't tell you. Uh, I want to thank, um, I got a, a, just a minute. When I was young, I could do all that. But I want to thank uh, Sister Jadida for reading. And I think I've got almost everybody. Uh, you said, okay, I, I want to also, okay, okay. I want to thank my, my children, uh, Ginger and her family. And I want to thank Marcus, his family, for standing in there with us. I mean, they, they could tell you some stories. I mean, they could tell you some stories, really. You know, uh, but uh, we always uh, had them sacrificing with us. Where we sacrificed, they sacrificed. And that's how it ought to be. They, they didn't have a silver spoon. You know, no, whatever we went through, they went through. And it was, it was a, a lot. And, uh, and I believe it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All right. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Repeat after me as you bless your brothers and sisters. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Go with God, everybody. <laughs>